that's why we have right and in four And why in plural? Well, because we know plural, so it's uh, natural for us to write in plural. Our users are no plural, and that's another thing. And that means that every user is actually a potential member of, of the application, which works out quite nicely. Uh, so what problems did we face? Well, uh, most of the, of the hardcore pro programmers, as we know, as we know from the poll, are using either the guy or or Emacs, uh, they're using either Linux or Mac, they're really not familiar with the problems that Windows, Windows users are facing. Um, so the, when we're talking about, uh, about uh, the Perl ID or any Perl ID with them, they always say, oh, Perl doesn't need an ID, or then they, they say, that, well, if, if a language needs an ID, it must be that's a bad language. So I was wondering if I write an ID in for Perl, does that turn Perl into a bad language? Because I have an ID, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and the last thing they, they tell me is that, okay, but there's a case, and, uh, and I don't use it because I have gathers, but, but there is, so you don't have to read a right line ID for another one. But uh, well, Epic actually, the plugin for Eclipse is, is quite nice, but the development is called because no one uh, is asking for, for, uh, for the features. Uh, sorry? Okay, I just wanted to have another one besides the one. No, 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 for oh, Eclipse. Using uh, no, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Epic is, is the, the one that all of the people are telling about, uh, who, are, who are like last minute thing that, okay, we, we somehow have to uh, uh, tell Gabo that not to write this ID because it's a stupid idea. Uh, and then they tell me, uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, so there are, there are more problems. Uh, the, 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 main, the biggest problem is that I'm not a good programmer, and I have to admit I'm not a good programmer. And the ID is a huge project, actually much bigger than I thought. <laughs> okay. So how can you write an ID if you don't know how to program? Well, the, the main issue is to, to generate some community support. So let other people try, other people write it. Um, and how can you do that? So I, I thought that, okay, I, I start writing something, and then I create a plugin system. So let people start playing with the ID uh, without any fear of, of, uh, of breaking something. Not that they could break, break anything because it was almost empty, but still, um, <laughs> to, to give them some kind of a platform that they can start experimenting with the code, and then hopefully they will uh, start uh, contributing to the code base. So the history of the project is that uh, uh, I started uh, in about May, June 2008, so about two, two years ago, and then uh, the first public release was in July, and then the first appearance, uh, the first time I talked about it in public was on the yeah, 2008 in, 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 uh, in Copenhagen. So I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Since then, uh, as you can from, look from uh, the Olo graph, you can see that the, the, the contribution grew uh, quite a lot. Uh, we were at uh, 0 0.64 recently, now we've increased. Um, there, were, there are more than 10,000 comments, so you can see that there is a lot of activity in the, in the project. So what happened in, the, in Copenhagen? I gave a lightning talk, uh, I listed all the features, that I would like to have in Padre, I told them that there, everything is there if you write it. And then it was quite good because actually I got the first commit from just after the, the lightning talk. So it was a good thing to do there, I think. Then the project management was quite liberal, meaning that I gave out commit to basically anyone who said, okay, I'll do something. Okay, so it means that we are, we are in like 60 commenters. Uh, some of them did only one or two commits. Uh, but in, it, this turned quite a number of people into mainstream sort of de developers of Padme. So right now we have, even though the project uh, in the last couple of months have, uh, have seen some decline in actual, actually development time, we still see about five to ten people every month committing to uh, various ch changes to Padre. So it means that there is a certain development community, uh, community uh, around Padre. The other thing I've been doing is adding features uh, without actually implementing them fully, just some, some kind of uh, concept ideas, uh, even knowing that they are full of bugs, expecting other people to go and go in and, and fix them. And it worked out quite well. So I was just adding ideas, and then people said, oh, that, but this is crap. Let me, let's re re rewrite it. And then, then uh, most of the features have been rewritten re actually like two or three times already. Um, yeah, I have 10 more minutes. Thank you. Um, so the other thing I have been doing is we have been, we have been doing is relying on existing code, so uh, stepping on the shoulders of other giants, um, or I don't know, also people. Um, <laughs> I'm not relaxing that. So uh, 
Padre is using a lot of data freeze uh, modules, SIPA modules directly, and five for testing. But overall, because of the recurrent uh, dependencies, there are like 200 uh, dependencies, I think, of Padre. And then if you look at all the, the plugins of Padre, we have, I think, about 500 dependencies, which is a nice amount of time. So Padre is built on SIPA. And it has all kinds of uh, uh, things that you have to take in uh, account when you're building a lot of plugins. So there are all kinds of phases. Bad, the good and bad has an argument. So what are these features, the, the, the phases? The good is that you, we don't have to write that code. So using CPAN is actually really good. Uh, the bad one is that we don't have any control over that code. So if anybody, we have to either fix it by ourselves and then send in a patch or, or rely on another person to fix it or, or whatever. And it's sometimes it's, it's bad. And the ugly is that we have to install all that code. We have to make sure that it can be installed uh, easily. And that's, uh, that's really bad. Uh, especially because we know that uh, actually the, the success of a project is more dependent on the ease of installation than on uh, the actual quality of the code of the project. So we have to think about distribution, how do we distribute the code. Um, so we, there is a CPAN distribution. So Padre is on CPAN from basically from the first release. And it, it is there in order to uh, reuse the various tools that the CPAN provides. But it's also to make it familiar for the average pro hacker who already knows how to install things from, from CPAN, so they can install it from directly from CPAN. But that's not really the good the solution for the majority of the users who are, as I mentioned, are the beginners who don't know yet all this uh, stuff and who don't want to install the 200 dependencies uh, from the, the zero. So we quite early we started to talk about talk to package managers, the downstream package managers of the various Linux distributions. So Padre is in most of the major distributions uh, at various versions. Obviously Padre is, uh, they are way behind the current uh, bleeding edge, which is many times as good. But <laughs> bleeding edge, you know, greatest and greatest. Yeah. So you have it in the distributions. Uh, we also have, uh, in order to let people start up uh, Faster, we also have uh, standalone um, installers for for Padre. Actually, we have one for, for Windows, which is quite good, and uh, the Linux and the Mac things are, are quite broken. We are planning to fix them and then release them, but we, have, we need, especially for, for Macintosh, but also for Linux, we need how in order to create a standalone thing that people can just download, unzip or whatever, and start running with uh, the latest version of Padre. But for Windows, we actually have quite nice installers. So we have a partner standalone installer. You just install it, and then you have an editor. Uh, and under, underneath that, you have a story connection. Yeah. Um, well, we need something here. Uh, so that, that can be used. And as, we can s as I could see, there are about 40 or 50 downloads per day of the MSI installer for Windows. So it's uh, quite nice, I think. Uh, in addition, Strawberry Pearl is going to come out with the what, what Strawberry Pearl itself has about 50,000 downloads a uh, quarter. That's about 500 a day. Um, and the Strawberry Professional is coming out, I think, in the, in the next few days. Uh, it's going to inst include Padre, meaning that from that point, uh, basically every download of Strawberry Pearl, Strawberry Professional Pearl, will include the version of Padre, so the people will have less uh, pay to avoid it. <laughs> okay. Another thing that we have been doing is, is, is just employing yeah, the standard open, open source mantra, which is just uh, really often uh, really early, um, just reusing the, open source, the, the rest of the people as a uh, community. Um, so what, happened, what we, have, we have been doing is releasing Padre once a week. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, months, we changed it to once every two weeks, but still quite often we release a version to CPAP. Still, we don't do the packages. Uh, the, for example, the Windows LSI package.